and welcome to session seven of By Law and Order. As a little bit of universe breaking information, there is no surge here this week. He is on a family vacation, therefore, Melander will be written out for plot purposes due in this session, but we'll be back in session eight, nine, and ten. Mm. But but uh, let's introduce our players. Who have we got here? Uh, hey, uh, how's it going? I am Ben, and I will be playing the character of Nog the Goblin, as well as my faithful companion, Valencia, the uh, the dog. I am a member of the Boros Legion, and uh, I'm kind of the muscle of the party in heavy quotation marks. Uh, I, uh, I, I'm here to ensure that we get from point A to point B with minimal uh, teeth getting knocked out of our skulls. Speaking of teeth getting knocked out, Cameron. <laughs> Hi, I'm Cameron, and I'll be playing Avenir. Avenir is a uh, uh, fourth category locutor with the Azorius Senate, and I'm running him as an inquisitive rogue. He's third level, and uh, he just wants to get through life without getting yelled at. He used to believe in things. <laughs> That's a good aspiration. <laughs> All right, and I'm Ian, and I will be playing today, as I have been all campaign, God willing, uh, the character of Enor, who is a third-level wizard, a bylaw mage in the Azorius Syndicate. He's there. Senate. Senate. Syndicate. S yeah, it doesn't really matter too much to me. I'm just riding out my employment until I can get to retire and take advantage of this sweet, sweet reformed sausage. That's like... Those are two very different things. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna get, the, get that sweet uh, retirement gold locket. And pawn it immediately for a vacation down to the southern plains. Mm. Well, when we last left our party, they were on a real tear, having procured six of the ten signatures they needed in order to ratify the Unified Ravnican Sausage Standard, bracket A-S-U-R-S-S, end bracket, number 2309-76-19. And although the, L, the average Ravnican wouldn't be able to truly appreciate this frankly astonishing feat of, of administrative diplomacy, if there's one thing that'd be guaranteed to appreciate even less, it would be finding out that it's currently legal to make sausages that are, by volume, 3% dandruff. Additionally, our heroes have been keeping... <laughs> it, it changes a bit every yeah. time, hair and this and is the one that got me. Yeah. <laughs> Like, ew, my uh, hot dog has an ingrown hair. Yeah, I was like, I was like, insects, yeah, that sucks pretty bad. And then there was like one other one, they're like, no, well, that's pretty bad. But the dandruff, I'm like, ugh. <laughs> Let me tell Sorry. you about the wonder of chitin for your joints. I, I would take, I would honestly eat an insect before I eat human dander. Well, <laughs> boy, do I have bad news for you. <laughs> about the new law you're passing it has a much expanded and clarified definition of allowable chitin oh good mm. sweet anyhow <laughs> additionally our heroes have been keeping busy finding exciting mushrooms discovering a new appreciation for the talents of the Kapitza Dirac University's cosplay club and agreeing to help an is it the is it league collect a forty thousand dollar Zeno or a forty thousand Zeno repair bill that has helpfully been addressed to a Golgari buffoon in additional additions, Molander, the party's resident druid, healer, and close talker, is not here today, having gone home to attend his Verdani's bi-weekly mega-birthday and to visit his grandmother, who has not seen him in four days, which is a near unimaginable sin by Selesnian standards. Thus deprived of Molander's unconventional approaches to hugging, touching, nudity, negotiations, and combat strategy, the rest of the party has voted to use this opportunity to get down to some adult business and attempt to retrieve a signature from the cult of Rakdos. Which is how you come to find yourselves at a small Goshen Heights cafe called the Off Chancery, waiting for Avenir's friend Rin, who is keeping with her custom, is fashionably late. Avenir, can you explain who Rin is and how you happen uh, to know her? I decided that Rin is a... Uh... She is a Rakdos cultist who is responsible for localization of many uh, 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 Rakdos productions into, you know, the, the, the cultural customs of the local district. So he, uh, we have an arrangement where we teach each other languages. I speak, you know, common, the Dalkin, Sphinx, and I also have Thieves Cant. Mm -hmm. So previously, I taught her Vidalkin and she taught me Goblin. And currently we're working on swapping Sphinx for Abyssal, because it's cool. <laughs> Fair. 
I have a proficiency with languages. I didn't realize you spoke goblin. Yeah, I, I didn't come up. That's fair. I didn't want to presume. Mm, you also understood all those swears Babalak said then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they were inventive mm. and to say the least. thorough. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I mean, the first thing you I, learn when you learn any language is what all the swear words are. Right, I think that's pretty universal. That and like, how do I go to the bathroom? Yeah. Those are like the number two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 wow. Sphinx, as it turns out, is a tricky language to teach because it has no written component. Mm. Mm. It has no, no alphabet. I suppose it's optimized for uh, a race of people that don't have fingers. That makes sense. Because it's a completely spoken language, or is a lot of it mental? Uh, yeah, I, I think it's spoken. Okay. Well, it only has a spoken... Mm. Mm. I, figured, I, I imagine there's like a psionic, like... Probably. Part to it, yeah. Yeah, I imagine it's uh, one of those languages that has a lot of, like, um, tonalities. Right. Kind of like Mandarin, I yeah. guess. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. well, I wrote my thesis on it. Yeah. Ooh. There you go. Yeah. Third harmonic, uh, what was, what did I call it? Uh, novel vulnerabilities in the Guild Pact introduced in the third harmonic Sphinx translation. All right. So, um, where's your friend? She's always late. Mm. I think it's her thing. I mean, I, I would I would chalk that up to like the Rakdos. Nothing <laughs> else really matters to them besides but the show must go on. Yeah, yeah, I mean No, that's true. <laughs> I'm glad as much as I already miss Mo Lander though, um I'm really glad we're not gonna have to explain a lot of the things that are going on in here. Yeah, I feel that Mo Lander would have an incompatible understanding of affection with <laughs> Rakdos cultist. It's probably apt. <laughs> uh, anyhow, after a couple minutes of killing time, maybe you have some pastries and some bourgeois here, the cafe door opens with a chime and Rin appears. Uh, she is short, even while wearing a pair of fabulous and fabulously impractical uh, stiletto heeled boots, but uh, like all members of the cult of Rakdos, she is sporting her official guild colors. However, since, you know, this is her day off and, you know, she's not at work, she's just wearing, like, a sensible knee-length black dress and a very angular and fashionable uh, red half-cloak over top of that. Mm -hmm. uh, she goes to the counter, she orders a coffee, which she orders black with no cream or sugar, looks around, sees Avenir, a grin of delight comes across her face, and she comes and sits down at the table. Oh, Avenir, it's so good to see you. You weren't at last week's meeting. Yeah, I had to uh, take on some extra duties at work. So I was away. Sorry, I tried to get a message to you, but I guess it didn't take. Oh, that's okay. Hi, uh, nice oh. to meet you. I'm Rin. I'm sorry. Oh, yes. nice to meet you. I'm Ev. I'm not. A, I'm Edor. Oh, Edor, you also work for the Azorius Senate. Yes, I actually close and open things. Mm. Hello, I'm Rin. Hey, nice to meet you. I'm Nog the Goblin. Uh, excellent. Uh, I'm a localizer for the Cult of Rakdos. I do a lot of things like when we take uh, touring productions uh, to uh, different places, we'll like localize jokes for goblins or Vidalkins or uh, other people. But they do say the theater is universal. Ah, anyhow, Avenir, I have some stuff for you. Oh. She looks in her satchel. She gives you some paperwork. She says, you didn't miss much from last week's language meeting. Because uh, the assignment was to translate the article from a, from a newspaper into your teaching language, but Abyssal mm. doesn't have words for tourist, log flume, or high-speed hydrotherapy, so it, it, you, honest, it was, wasn't useful. You didn't miss anything. This is an interesting article. Mm. Ah, so anyhow, you didn't meet me just for last week's notes, did you? No. I need to ask a favor. Mm-hmm. As part of my work, I need to get a thing signed by a high-ranking member of the Cult of Rakdos. And I was wondering, would you be able to help us out meeting someone? Avenir, you know, a more dramatic person might be offended that this is the first time you've taken any serious interest in my work. Well, I'm glad you're not a... Uh, a I'm glad you're not a more dramatic person then. I'm not sure I could handle it. <laughs> So you need to meet somebody in what, how high ranking? In technical terms, uh, it's 
renowned four, renowned five, five. three, five. five, renowned five. So, uh, hmm. Rin pauses and thinks for a second because she's not. She is actually like because she's a localizer. I would say that Rin has probably got some renown in the guild, but not enough to sign your papers for you. Hmm. <sighs> I think I can help you out. There is, now, obviously, we don't advertise our shows in the conventional sense, but once you know what to look for, they're easy enough to spot. Uh, we like to think of our performances as the, as the worst kept secret in Ravnica. That way you get the thrill of doing something naughty and slightly below board, but we don't take any of the box office risk. So, anyhow, there's a show tonight in Avdina. And if I would you, I would head over there as quickly as possible. Once, I think you will be able to find it if you know what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And you're a very clever Avenir. You're resourceful. I've oh. always appreciated your company. So I definitely think you'll have no trouble if you just go over there. And once you find what you're looking for, ask to speak to Nishi. Mr. Nishi's the director. And as long as you get there before the show starts, you'll have time to talk to him. But it, you might need to drop my name. So if you do, don't embarrass me, my Paul Mac. Do I know what that means? That's an abyssal word, but you don't know what it means. Well, hey, you've been very, very helpful. We mm. appreciate it. Yeah. You guys really do seem to love your job. I have to say I envy it a little bit. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I mean, loving my job is really, it's what gets me up in the morning. The thought of going into work and proofreading things. Did, you, did I mention that I might be moved into QA for laws in the fall? Okay. Automated testing, it's very exciting. Good, I have no idea what that would mean, but as long as it makes you happy, I'm mm. sure it's wonderful. Oh, well, thank you very much. Mm. Ooh, she, she looks at her watch. I would, uh, I'd get going. Uh, because you do want to get there before curtain, otherwise no one will be able to talk to you until after the show's over. Anyhow, Daj Hamij, Avenir, I'll see you next week. Appreciated, Ta. Thanks, we start moving on, moseying on our way. Yeah. Uh, uh, Obdina Hills is a, neighbor, is a neighboring neighborhood. It's pretty mm -hmm. close to Goshen Heights. You can either walk, which will take 20 minutes, or you can take the subway, which will take like 10. Subway it is. Subway it is. Mm -hmm. Uh, On our way to the subway, I kind of like look over at Avenir and I'm like, Hey, what's, yeah. uh, what's the nature of the relationship between you and Rin? We trade languages. Oh, because I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't like to say that I'm a master of romance or anything. But uh, it occurs to me that maybe they've got the, a thing or two for you. Just based on, you know, body language and such. I don't think a relationship with a member of the cult of Rakdos would go over terribly well at work. Quite frankly, I had to hold my tongue the whole time she was here. I have some very strong opinions on localizers inserting their own culture within translations. That's it. You did it. You got it. How did we get an anime joke? <laughs> you got it. That's it. Since we're ten minutes in. <laughs> oh. You used it up for this for this session. Just take it and keep moving. I'm injecting <laughs> local flavor. My character is very deep and has a very interesting inner life. Yeah. Very similar to Ian Zone. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you for that, Enor. I really appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, it was very topical. She uh. seems nice otherwise. Yeah, she does. Anyway, we need to get to the Abdina Hills. What did you, what did you say, Nishi? Uh, uh, she said Mr. The Nishi. Nishi is the name Mr. of the Mr. Nishi. Mr. Nishi. Mr. Nishi. All right. So we'll say you have a short subway ride where you right. talk about uh, various romance incompatibilities with career aspirations. And uh, so after a short and for broadcast time reasons uneventful commute, <laughs> You, <laughs> you arrive at Abdina Hills, which is a ritzy district known for its high-end stores, fancy restaurants, and high-rise condominiums that advertise amenities like elevators, rooftop griffin stables, and concierge service. The streets here are bustling with shoppers, and most of this neighborhood is guildless because it's unaffi uh, unaffiliated. Money 
travels between all guilds. Uh, uh, but dotted among the crowd, you do see a few younger members of like the Orzov Syndicate flaunting their wealth at the boutiques and stuff like that, but mostly it's just average people. Uh, like all the places where people live, there is a community announcement board, and this one is made with a fine dark wood enhanced by the addition of some tasteful landscaping around it. Ooh. Well, let's have... Yeah, <laughs> we look at the community <laughs> board. Uh, hold X. <laughs> yeah. Announcement one. Comic Elementary School presents Casino Night. 10th of Zviskir, 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. at Comic Elementary School, Corbavia Avenue, Abdina Hills. Enjoy a fun medium stakes night of blackjack, witch, witch mon nephilim poker, and triple knife baccarat in support of the Comic Elementary School's Junior Bookmakers Club. House edge guaranteed not to exceed three and 1958%. Announcement two. Wanted, nude models, goblins only, but any gender okay. Not porn, because it's just for me. <laughs> Nog, Nog looks at Valencia and like, and he's like, eh? And Valencia's like, mm -mm. <laughs> Contact Albord Pro Musk for more information or to see my drawings. It's good that she knows she's a dog. <laughs> Apartment 62, King Dross Commons of Dina Hills. And finally, annual Transylvanian convention. Two extra performances added due to high demand. 24th to 28th with 28th crossout and they changed handwritten to 30th of Quagar, which is this month. Mm. And in fact, the 30th of Quagar is today. today. Right. Uh, show starts at 7 p.m. Purchase tickets in advance for splash zone seating. Ubdina Community Playhouse, 2300 Donji Street. Well, looks, like our, looks like our place. Yeah. <laughs> splash zone. 2300 Donji Street. If we end up watching the performance, I feel like we should go for the Splash Zone tickets. I mean, I suppose that is the, uh, the, the, the primo seating, really. Like, if you're not blue the next day, then... I've been to ones of Rakdos performances, and I was, like, up in the nosebleed, so I didn't even get to see any of the good stuff. Really? I've never been. What are they like? A lot. <laughs> when you say when you were up in the nosebleeds. <laughs> it was really, really high up. Okay. The alt altitude wise. Fair. <laughs> uh, uh, do you guys know where Donji Street is? Do you want to ask somebody? There's plenty of people around here. Do you want to just wing it? I mean, I pr probably should know vaguely where Donji Street is if Make I can roll myself. Make a local knowledge roll. Yes, I would. Or do. like something to do with like your job. I don't care. Investigation. Make me a, make it's me a, a history roll. Yeah. Oh. Make me a figuring out God where the damn it. community playhouse is. It's a five plus six is thirteen. Eleven. Uh, it's somewhere in Abdina, probably this way. Thirteen. 13. What did you get? I'll ask for directions. <laughs> Good call. Uh, uh, excuse me, do you know where Abdi... Uh, sorry, 2300... Uh, uh, Donji Street. Donji Street is? Do uh, you mean the Playhouse? Yes. Yeah, it's like three blocks that way. Thank you. Uh, as you're walking past there, you realize that this neighborhood is too fancy mm. for people who are on the street selling hot dogs. This is... This is... This is where rich people live. Oh, man, but hope. you pass a restaurant called Sausage and Bun. Like it's sausage plus sign <laughs> bun. <laughs> we had that here. Yeah, we did. Yeah. It's in Vancouver now. Yep. <sighs> is, it, is, is the sign on a, uh, a distressed piece of lumber? Absolutely. That was recovered mm. from what is, yeah. what is the likelihood that, like, because I imagine we got to get moving so we can get those tickets. Like, mm -hmm that we're not allowed to bring outside food or drink into the playhouse. I mean, I wouldn't eat in there. Yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe we could swing back after the show? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to be responsible. Plus, maybe they'll have one of those guys walking around who sells peanuts. I Ooh. genuinely understand you want to go to a Rakdos show with an empty stomach. Gar doesn't really freak me out. I mean, that's that's good. That's good. That's, that's Wait, step is that one. good? Is that good? I think a strong stomach is part of the job. Mm. Well, I mean, I did clean, used to clean urinals. Right, yeah, I suppose uh, barracks duty is yeah. pretty gruesome. Mm. Yeah. I don't like to brag, but 
I have no capacity to deal with pain or gore. Ah, don't, don't worry, I didn't take that as a brag. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to pass by sausage plus bun? Yes. All right. Well, in that case, you will have a very un, a, an uneventful five-minute walk to the community playhouse, mm. which you arrive and you see a relatively modern brick building, mm. except for the fly gallery part of it. It's squat and functional. It sports the sort of architecture common to municipal buildings everywhere, where the biggest design consideration wasn't beauty, grandeur, or cost, but adherence to the various quirks of the Azorius Senate's building codes. Uh, make me an investigation check. Six. Twelve. Mm-hmm. Fourteen. All right. The marquee on the front of the building says Annual Transylvanian Convention. However, there are several conspicuously red and black banners that have been draped in front of the building and down the sides and mm. stuff like that. And while they don't have a Cult of Rakdos logo on them... But is it sort of the inverse? No, it's just they're just red and black yeah. with, like, right. diagonal... Yeah. Right, like hey. that. Uh, and uh, also with a 14, you will notice there's a large chalkboard in front, like a chalkboard sign on the sidewalk in front of the Ubdina Community Playhouse that displays upcoming tour dates for the annual Transylvanian Convention. On the 15th of Zaviskar, they'll be in Kozina Park, and on the 14th of Griev, they'll be traveling all the way to Pirianda for a cheese festival. Mm. Oh. Mm. So, Enor, you put all of these factors together, remembering previous sessions, and your keen senses tell you this is not, in fact, the annual Transylvanian Convention. This is a cover for the Cult of Rakdos, and more specifically, this is the Masaaki Guerrilla Theater Troupe, which means two things. You finally get to find out why this group was voted Best Underground Performance Slash Social Commentary Slash Festival of Havoc in the 6th District Times Picayune's 10,076 10, Best of the City's Readers Poll. And it's time for box text. Oh boy. Now I have to explain the cult of Rakdos. Am I just putting this together because I noticed that red and black aren't sylvan colors? Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When the Guild Pact was struck, over 10,000 years ago. The cult of Rakdos was recognized as one of the 10 guilds that would rule Ravnica, not because anyone thought that they were, would do a particularly good job, but because they needed to be there. For as long as there have been societies, there have been people who are hedonistic and capricious, cruel and egomaniacal, eager to set the world alight just for the pleasure of watching it burn. Including the cult of Rakdos and the Guild Pact was an attempt to take that chaotic, evil energy and use it to strengthen the agreement, to channel those dark impulses into something useful, like musical theater. The kind of people who typically join the cult of Rakdos have innate musical talent, a flair for the dramatic, and an extremely high pain tolerance. So. That's why none of us are in the cult of Rakdos. Weirdos! <laughs> I stubbed my toe last night and almost cried. I mean, you died and came back to life. That's pretty good. I what? Yeah, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> you you, do you dodged a gigantic tree coming at your head. Yeah, I can't even remember how I did that, but it was awesome. So, you're at the playhouse. Mm -hmm. I assume you're all wearing your official outfits. Uh, no reason not to. Yeah. According that to me. Yeah, yeah. That you, yeah, you're all dressed in, you're on, you're on, you're on work, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so there, there's obviously the front, mm -hmm. and then there's the loading dock out back. Mm. Uh, I guess we would go, we're not actually ticket holders. Mm. We would probably go around to the loading dock, I think. Well, can we buy tickets at the front? There's somebody sitting in the box office, as far as oh. I can tell. Because okay. I, I don't think we want to sneak in. No, no, but like, I, yeah. We can just buy tickets. Yeah. Go on in. Uh, front. Although Rin did tell us if we got here before the show started, we might be able to just like quickly speak with Mr. Nishi. Uh, that's a good point. We, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we could just go around back and find a roadie. Do you want to? So you're going to go around back? I think going around back makes the most sense that we can go directly to the people who are actually in charge rather so, than the front door. So, so, so far. We have gone once through the front gates with the gruel, <laughs> and once through the front gates with the uh, the the Golgari. 
Right. So one went really well, the other went really bad. So we're like 50% mm -hmm. win rate with going in the front door. Yeah, no, I mean, like, maybe we just go up to the box office, actually. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Sure. All right. So there's a human cult member. She's dressed in, like, you know, I'm at work gear, and she's reading the newspaper. And she sees you approach and goes, Hello! Would you like to purchase tickets for tonight's show? I'm, unfortunately, it is our last night here, so Splash Zone and Lower Balcony is already sold out, but we still have a few seats in the Upper Balcony. Also, we don't allow dogs inside. Oh, well, um, we were actually hoping to be able to speak with Mr. Nishi quickly before the show. Ah, Mr. Nishi is extremely busy right now. It is only an hour until curtain. Oh, well, this wouldn't even take five minutes, and uh, my friend Rin told us that we would be able to speak with him if we, if we arrived promptly. Hmm. Rin the localizer. Yes. Describe her. Short, uh, you know, well, ab about this high. Mm. Um, I'm going to say that you get her description. She, yeah, right. more. She wears, she wears uh, stiletto heels, uh, a fashionable. I mean, everybody yeah. in this cult wears stiletto heels. A Drinks black coffee. Fashionable. Uh, wears dark lipstick. Yeah, mm. black skirt, wears a fashionable angled top. Once she's satisfied you actually know Rin, mm -hmm. she goes... Because mm, Rin does have a little pull in the guild. Mm -hmm. Well, as long as it's quick. Um, it's been a real day around here. I'm Kina. Nice to meet you. Oh, Avenir. Avenir. Uh, Nog. And this is Valencia. Uh, okay. You're, she can come. Let's just go. She can stay outside. But she's, she's, she understands. I don't want to... Well, let's go. Quickly. Okay. Come on. She didn't, she didn't say no. Like, they wouldn't let you bring your dog into the performance, but mm. she figures you're just coming in and out. Mm -hmm. You've name-dropped someone important. Get him through. Mm -hmm. So she, she motions for you to follow her inside. And as you enter the darkness of the theater and walk down the right aisle towards the back, you can, you can see that setup is well underway for tonight's show. There's roustabouts and stagehands setting up props and pyrotechnics, and a goblin in the control booth is calling out lighting cues as he tests them. Spike wheel acrobat cue! And then all the lights on the stage go down, and then they come back on a platform 20 feet in the air. Fellow spot! And then you see two spotlights swivel around onto where this platform is and start tracking an invisible acrobat hmm. across the stage. And then while that is happening, another goblin yells, Fire in the hole! And a giant pinwheel of flame comes to life on the back of the stage. A wave of heat hits you and then fades away as the goblin, satisfied that everything is working properly, shuts it off. In the middle of this, you see an enormous bearded man on stage, dressed very casually but still in Rakdos colors. Uh, and he's tuning a 12-string guitar. Neat. Uh, but before you can linger too long, Kina is like, come on, come on, come on and ushers you up the stairs. You actually walk across the, the front of the stage and into the wings on the left side, and you actually go behind the enormous black velvet curtain that separates the front of house, where all the seats and stuff are, from mm. the backstage area. And as you get back there, you see six identically dressed acrobats that are all standing in a circle, helping each other stretch and stuff like that. And then you see it, you're walking through, and then an ogre pushes past you with a giant cart laden with, lot, with knives and chains just wheels it into position just so and marks it out with some gaff tape and stuff like that and then buzzes off. The whole place is just buzzing uh, and everybody's quite nervous for some reason. Uh, make me a perception check. Uh, Twenty. Twelve. Mm. Non-natural. Non mm. uh, it's fourteen. Uh, you notice that people seem to be a little on edge. Mm. You can hear someone yelling. Very faintly. Can I determine what the voice sounds like? It sounds like a male voice. Okay. And it's not like angry, it's exasperated. Mm. So, uh, uh, Kina is like, come on, come on, come on. And uh, you head, you cross the backstage area and then you head down another flight of stairs. And now you're truly into the bowels of the theater. So, like, the stairs are narrow and the paint is old. This isn't maintained, even though this is a nice theater. They're 
graffiti of like Ooh. previous performances that have been here and and stuff like that. Uh, and uh, you're going down this narrow hallway and you hear the yelling get louder and it's like, there's nothing that can be done? Are you kidding me? And it's like, food poisoning? Seriously? And then you get to this door where the yelling is coming from and you can all hear it now and Kina says, um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Nishi, uh, sorry to bother you. Uh, I've got some friends here of Rin's and uh, they, they say it's, it's very important and it's not going to take too much of your time. And she just opens the door and you can see that there's, this is just a little office that's part of the theater. And you can see that there's a very stressed out middle-aged man dressed in Rakdos clothes who's sort of like futzing at his hair and like looking worried and stuff like that. And like, and, and you know, going, ah, and there's a, 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 a Simic doctor who you can tell she's Simic because she's dressed in Simic colors mm -hmm. and she's an elf. And, uh, the doc and uh, the doctor it cuts off the man and says, like, I, I don't know what you think that I can do about any of that. Bad sausage! It takes people out all the time. They're going to be fine in a couple days, but they can't perform tonight, and I won't clear them because there's no way anybody who's dealing with a two exits, no waiting situation is going to go on stage, Nishi. You know that. And Nishi goes, oh, my God. Oh, Shova, I don't... We're, we're practically sold out, and then looks up and says, oh, what's this? Kina says, some friends have written to see you. What do you want? Hi, we're here from the uh, uh, b b uh, the Consumer Goods uh, Protection or Inspection Agency. Mm -hmm. We're here in the absence of the Guild Pack. We are here to get the uh, the, the unified Ravnican sausage standard. Uh-huh, uh-huh, look, signed. look, look, I don't, I've got three hacker bats that are out with food poisoning and nobody is available on reserve and I've got a nearly sold out <laughs> show. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you see a gleam of hope flash into his weary middle-aged eyes. I'm so excited. <laughs> is this the opera from Final Fantasy 3. <laughs> six. Sorry. <sighs> Chat. Sorry. I'm six. 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 Sorry. What did you need me to do again? He says suddenly very, very personably. Oh, we just need to, you to sign this document that ratifies the Re Unified Ravnican Sausage Standard. Well, what's that do? Uh, it modifies the current uh, allowable contents of non-sausage matter in sausages. It's, it's a food safety it's uh, a piece of legislation. Yeah, something so people stop getting sick from sausages and stuff. Shofa's like, oh, good. <laughs> yeah. I thoroughly endorse it. I think you should sign it, Nishi. The uh, irony is delicious. Uh, and uh, Nishi goes, I would be delighted to help you after the show. Oh, because. Should we go? No, we can just go buy some tickets. No, 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 no. I have a proposal. Uh-huh. How about if you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Uh, yeah, sure. I can just find a glove mm. somewhere. The touching I... guy is not here today, but... How if you help me stage my last triumphant show, because, as I'm sure you've heard me say, you know, I've pre-sold a lot of tickets and is our last night at Odina. You know, we like to go out with a bang mm -hmm. here in Rakdos. I will sign your agreement. Sure. What, <laughs> what, how can we help you? <gasps> all right. So first of all, we've got some ground rules when you work with the Rakdos. One, no dogs, because having animals on stage is cruel. I respect that. I thought it was going to be some nonsense about dogs being beasts or something like that. But you know what? If no harm comes to Valencia, I'm pretty happy. Hey, you want to go wait outside? Uh, she can stay in the green room. Okay, all right. You you go to the green room. Shova, take make sure that the dog is taken care of. Water and like probably at least a couple of snacks throughout the show, if possible. Mm. Speaking of Shova, uh, this is Shova. She's our staff doctor. She's on contract to us uh, from Zonot Two. Uh, while we're here in town. If you get hurt doing anything, she'll patch you up afterwards. Oh, uh, pleasure to meet you. Sorry, hurt? Well, doing. yes. Obviously, we can't, you know how long it takes to train an acrobat? You can't just have them 
actually killing themselves on stage. That how are you supposed to put on a show? People, the reviews would be terrible. Oh, and 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 finally, you just can't go out there looking like that, Kina. I'm sure we've got something that will fit them. Could you take them to see Magenta in the costume department, please? Yes. Ah, now when and Kina, when they're done, uh, take them to take them to Parvis. He'll help them out because he's crewing the Wheel of Death tonight. All right, ta-ta! Thank you so much for dealing with the Rakdos. The show goes on! The, the Wheel of, the, de the wheel of de de death? death? Yo, this sounds like it's going to be a blast. Did, oh, uh, Valencia, could you guard the, uh, the, the... The agreements? Yeah. Valencia, like, waddles over and takes them in her mouth mm. and then, like, walks away and goes back to the green room. Don't eat all the watermelon and honeydew. <laughs> <laughs> She's not really a fruits person. Mm. A uh, dog. Mm. Person. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> so, 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 so Nishi shuts the door, mm -hmm. goes back to doing whatever he does do, mm. and after shoving you three and Kina out, and she looks at you and goes, I mean, my job is usually surprising, but I... Well, okay, then, all right. Uh, follow me. <laughs> Kina leads you back down the hallway, and then after a few feet, you go into a different little room. That's, uh, this is the costume room, uh, and you see a human woman with wildly curly red hair sitting under a lamp, sewing a large tear closed in a leotard. Mm. And Kina says, um, hey, Magenta. Uh, good news. And Magenta goes, yeah, I heard that Nishi stopped yelling, so, uh, what's up? She's like, well, we've got some replacement hackerbats. Can you find them some costumes? And she's like, how? We called everyone. Looks up at you and goes, ha! Ta-da! Oh. Nog tries to, like, stand in one leg and look acrobatic. What are you doing? Kina, are you are, are you serious? The show must go on. Okay, so we've got to find them three hackerbats. <laughs> huh, okay, okay, hold on, hold on, hold okay. on, hold on. Mag Magenta goes. She grabs her measuring tape. She arms, waists, heads, legs, inseams, head, arm, waist. Either that, or we're gonna get to play a game of Wheel of Death. Chest. I assume we'll spin the wheel and then solve Leg. a puzzle as to whether Insane. a guy's dead or not. Hey, I've never been on stage before. This is gonna be great. Wait, what? I thought oh. we had to find them. No, we, we did! It's us! Wait. <gasps> what? Well, <sighs> okay. you boys are gonna have fun. I've been, like I said, I've been to ones of these performances, and they're a lot. I say in Goblin, are you shitting me? <laughs> hey, watch your language. We're in the theater. Okay, the pronunciation's right then. Okay. <laughs> Screams in Goblin. Uh, so Magenta measures all of you thoroughly. Uh, measure, measures Avenir with, uh, with an impressed hmm when she gets to the biceps and chest muscles because all that island ball is playing up. I thought you were going to say off. NC when yes. it was like... <laughs> no. <laughs> LOL. Uh, Wait, uh. <laughs> does this come with a dance belt? So uh, she comes back after a few minutes and goes, Okay, it's not going to be great, but uh, here, uh, Vidalkin, uh, Enor, uh, try this on for size. Uh, let me know if you need help with the fiddly bits. Does it get bigger? Uh, it should stretch a little bit, yeah. Mm. Alright, so if we could see what Enor's costume looks like. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> I look just like Andy Circus. <laughs> just good, because so, I'm in one. <laughs> uh, are you doing some kind of mocap? <laughs> That's all we had it fit him. <sighs> All right, uh, human, uh, human, human man. I've got this one uh, for you. I think this one is actually going to look great on you. This is perfect. Here you go. <laughs> Nog no, just looks. He's like, mm, looking good, buddy. I feel like I should be throwing toast at a screen. <laughs> Why did they put the dance belt on your face? <laughs> 
I hope everyone is enjoying this as much as I have. I've known this is coming for seven weeks now. Uh, <clears throat> and step uh, to the right. And uh, Goblin. I'm so excited. And Magenta hands you your costume reverently and says, this is one of my finest creations. It's one of my, I did this uh, as part of my thesis at Capazza Dirac. The only thing that'll fit you, please be careful with it or I will kill you. Uh, careful is the name of the game. Let's let me try this thing on. <laughs> the sausage is good. <laughs> I look amazing. This is everything I ever wanted to wear. <laughs> the, the, must really? the mustache also fits me really well. <laughs> Big ups to our artist Featherweight, who oh. drew these. Uh, <clears throat> How did you grow that that quickly? <laughs> it's a prosthesis. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, the hair, the hair piece is quite nice, I think. I might and actually just try and grow it out like this. It's very finely made. Magenta was not lying when she said it was one of her, her, her prized creations. Uh, anyhow, <clears throat> do you want to? You all comfortable in your costumes? Ready to go? It's a Is it cold? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it's a little bit breezier than I thought, but it's actually kind of nice. We tend to make the costumes quite light around here, says Kina, because on account of all the fire, so it gets warm on stage. Anyhow, also, you know, the thrill of performance and all that, right? I can imagine a bit too much mm. loose clothing probably lights on fire, and accidents can happen. Mm. I mean, you know, a few accidents are okay around here. But, you know, not too many. We don't want people sweating, you know, your hands get slippery, you can't hold on to the knives and the ropes and stuff. I can't do not. I have, to, I, I have to stop looking at the overlay. I can't. I, it's the smile on Nog that's killing me. I guess I'm lucky I shaved my legs for Island Ball this week. Yeah. <laughs> See that from the from the audience. They're like a good twenty feet back behind the orchestra. It's fine. Yeah, but I know. <sighs> so, you 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 finally come out of costuming. This has taken quite a while. Um, you want to check in with Valencia or anything like that, or maybe better not to let her see you in this. Probably for the best. No, <laughs> it'd be a lot of like. Mm. <laughs> Just the curtain opens and my boss is right in center stage. If <laughs> you're like. Well, this is going to be an awkward conversation around the water cooler next week. <laughs> and you like, have a mask. Yeah. It's like when you, it's, it's like if you went to like a, like a porn convention and you ran into one of your coworkers while you were there and you go, oh, That's... Uh, let's just wave like this yeah. isn't awkward. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like they've just got a shopping bag and. Yeah. <laughs> Samples. I mean, this sounds a lot like Churchill meeting one of his hecklers directly in stage. <laughs> so, um. What do we do? Oh, I don't know. I only work the box office. We need to go find Parvis. Uh, all right. So Kina leads you to the backstage heel toe, area. Heel toe. Heel toe. Uh, and you and you notice now that Nishi's not yelling and freaked out. Everybody's a lot calmer. Okay. You know, people are moving around slower. Uh, inexplicably, that huge bearded guy is still tuning that twelve-string guitar. He's being very thorough. It's Ding, 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 ding. Apparently, ding, I take ding. the heels really well. Oh, really? What you did you roll on 20. your wearing Nat heels? Nat 20. Avenir. Yeah? You look awesome. Damn and right. And you feel great, too. Uh, anyhow, so after you walk through backstage and, you know, you navigate all those people coming and going and there's still people testing things and lighting mm -hmm. cues going off and... You know, but you know, less urgently set now because people are a bit more relaxed. Uh, uh, you uh, you make your way over to a wire-looking human male who sort of got like long, greasy, scraggly hair, multiple tattoos, and singular teeth, and he is standing in front of an enormous wheeled platform. And Kina says, "Parvis, guess what? Here are your hackrobats for tonight." And he looks at you and goes. Wow, Mr. Nishi told me you three were going to be green, but that's a yikes for me. Sorry, they, it's the lights. They make me look a little bit paler than normal. Eee. All right, well, thank you, Kina. Um, yeah, and Kina says, all right, good luck. 
Mm. Break a leg. And if you are going to break a leg, try to like have it so the bone sticks out because that's more exciting. So, bye. And she goes back to do whatever she needs to do at the box mm. office. Mm. Uh, and you can start to hear, it gets, you can start to hear as Parva starts to talk to you. You start to hear the orchestra just sort of play like filler house music. Mm. And you can start to hear like the muttering of crowds coming in. They're opening the house already? We don't even know what we're doing. <laughs> Rack nose. Uh, so, um, oh, I, I, get, I gotta do my Parvis voice. Hey, which ones do you use wants to go first? Hey, now you're speaking my language. I'll, I'll, you, you watch this, boys. I'll show you how it's done. Okay, great. For, all right, first up, we got the Wheel of Death. You two can hang back and watch from the wings. What, wheel Don't touch of, nothing. Wait, Wheel of what? Wheel of I, Death. I thought it was the Circle of Life. <laughs> so here's how it works, because obviously we're going to tell you a little bit. You, first, you're going to climb up into this platform and into that wheel. Don't touch any of the spikes on the outside, because I just disinfected them. Anyhow, you sit in the wheel, and then when it's time to go, I'm going to push you on stage and start turning the crank down here so it starts to spin. So you'll have to keep up with it, or you're going to end up falling on your ass, and you won't be able to dodge anything. So some spiky bits are going to come at you from the left, and from the right, and from the left again, and then from both sides. So here are your blood packs that you can spread off and stuff when you want it to look real exciting, you know, mix in with your own blood just for a little bit of the show. Uh, so up you go, come on! <laughs> I, like, I guess put a blood pack in my pants, like, I, I cut in amongst my bandolier to hide them, I suppose. <laughs> I don't know where else to keep them. Uh, all right, so you're up in the wheel. Uh, yep. So okay, to 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 paint to, to paint a picture because I was picturing a vertical, mm -hmm. well, but I imagine this is horizontal. Is it like a German wheel? This is it is, it is in, this this is inspired by the German wheel. Okay. So the German wheel, if you're not familiar, is like a circus apparatus where it's like, uh, it's basically like a hamster wheel. Okay. That uh, is sort of affixed and can and and in this case is crank turned so the wheel spins without you having control over it. Whereas a true circus German wheel, the acrobat makes it go. Right. Uh, except it's got like spikes around the outside. It all look very dramatic and you shouldn't touch apparently. And there's these big levers with like that are attached to grids of spikes that look like they can flip down from either side for extra effect. Okay. All right. Um. Uh. Hey guys, yeah. On the off chance that uh, something goes wrong, I just want to say, please bring my dog to Scova because I don't trust them. I don't trust Valencia with either of you. We will let Valencia take us home. <laughs> <laughs> she she knows the way. Ah, so you're up there. Yep. You want to do anything to prepare? Uh, it, the curtain's closed, I imagine. The curtain is currently closed, but you can hear people coming in, and it sounds like the show's gonna be starting very quickly. Um, I mean, I don't know what to, I guess I stretch? <laughs> <laughs> I stretch it out? Sounds, sounds very apt. Uh, after a few minutes of stretching, we'll say, you start to hear, you start to hear, like, the audience cheering and stuff like that. And you and you can you can't really tell because obviously there's a big black velvet curtain in the in the way, but like the house lights go down and it just seems a little bit darker. And uh, you can hear uh, you could you you hear suddenly an explosion of applause, and you hear the ringleader of the of the Masaaki Guerrilla Theater troupe say, "Esteem." Audience members, welcome to the Masa Aki Gorilla Theatre Troupe! And I think that you will find our first performer will make sure you have a real good time! <laughs> Cheering! Orchestra music! And then you, the wheel lurches forward suddenly as okay. you can, if you look down, you can see Parvis is pushing it out. Uh, and the curtains come out. You can't really see a lot of the K of the 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 theater because there's lots of theater lights on you. So it's just kind of like this black void, but there's lots of faces there. It appears to be, if not almost sold out, or if not totally sold out, very close to sold out. And uh, you hear the musicians fire up their instruments and so they're playing some jaunty music that, if I was able to hum, it would sound a little bit like Google Bordello. Uh, oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, 
if you know what that means. And yeah. if, don't, if you don't, maybe we look did. it up later. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the three of us. Uh, and the wheel starts to spin. Make me an acrobatics check, not to immediately fall on your ass. All right. <clears throat> Here we go, team. Uh, that would be a 13. Ah, good. You easily find your center of balance and start jogging along the bottom of the spinning wheel. <sighs> All right. So, you going to chill off a little bit? Or oh, yeah, like yeah. That? I look out to the crowd and I go, Is everybody having a good time? They can't hear you because you're not mic'd. <laughs> <laughs> no way I go, Okay! <laughs> um... Do you want to do any tricks or show off a little bit or anything like that? Uh, I would like to uh, attempt to do a uh, somersault, like wheel around, like as as the wheel is kind of doing its thing. That sounds fantastic. Could you make me a, uh, an, an acrobatics check for that? Uh, whew, 21. You do an incredibly graceful somersault. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks fantastic. The crowd cheers. Parvis looks up at you and gives you the thumbs up, and he goes, "All right, that was a good warm up. Are you ready for this to get real?" I wait. I thought it was already real. Incoming! Do you want to dodge to the left or right? <laughs> <laughs> left. Ah, uh, you turn directly into a grid of spikes. You take t you take one d six plus two piercing damage. Uh, so you take seven piercing damage. One of how your much, blood packs how, goes off. I was going to say, I was like, do I need to even use one? Oh, it goes off no matter what, because you have taken seven piercing damage, and you can hear the audience gasp. Yeah. And Parvis goes, didn't you listen to anything I said? Christ, look alive, they're coming from the right next time. Okay, sounds good. All right, the wheel is spinning. You've been injured. Yeah. Do you want to do any tricks? I do uh, a cartwheel this time. All right, make me an acrobatics check. I got a 16. You do a very nice cartwheel. It's not as good as the somersault, but you look great, even though you are bleeding heavily from your left side. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Ready for this? It's coming from the right, you said. Yep. All right. Incoming. Do you want to dodge left or right? I dodge left. 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 <laughs> left. Left. I make the L's in front of my head. <laughs> uh, All right. <clears throat> this time, the opposite arm swings down from the top of the reel, and you dodge out of the way. How do you do your dodge? Describe it to me. Uh, Nog decides to um, leap. He, he, it's coming down, I guess, and, and Nog, uh, as soon as it hits, because uh, he, he kind of goes up the wheel a little bit, puts his hands and does like a leapfrog over top of the spikes, oh, I guess, fantastic. if possible. Yeah, I think, uh, I think you dodged correctly. So, I won't even so make less you left roll and for more that. up. Actually, make me an acrobatics roll. Fourteen. Fourteen. It is not quite as elegant, even. But you know what? It's very passable. The spikes just miss you, uh, but that's okay. The audience loved it. Cheering and applause. No blood this time. Everybody's super into it. Like people are clapping. There's other stuff going on on stage. The orchestra is still playing. You're not paying attention, but yeah. it's great. All right. Uh, so, uh, do 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 Parvis goes, all right, incoming! Wait, which direction this time? Do you want to dodge left or right? I dodge right. You turn directly into a grid of spikes again. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> you take, uh, five piercing damage. All right, so I'm taking 13 damage so far. Your other blood pack explodes. The audience gasps in horror. <laughs> <laughs> And then the ringmaster goes, oh, part of the show! I, 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 I'm like still sort of running, but like wheezing a little bit. Uh, but then I turn to the audience and like with some of the blood that's on my body, uh, like, I'm like, I gotta put on a show. So I like take some of the blood and I like slick back my hair oh, even they, more with it. They absolutely love And then love finger that. guns. Oh, <laughs> rapturous applause, rapturous applause. Uh, Parvis is like, I mean, you're kind of sucking, but you're making it look good. All right, now we're going to do this for real. And he starts turning the wheel a lot faster. <laughs> Hold on, wait. <laughs> <laughs> so make me uh, an athletics check not to fall on your ass. Well, athletics, I'm even better at that. Apparently not. Uh, that's a 12. A 12, you can just 
barely keep up. That is, your save, your save on this is 12, by the way. So oh, you sweet. Have to okay. That. So, you know, just barely keep up and you're going. And Parvis goes, now it's time for the big finale. That's both sides since you failed this a lot. Okay. Uh, recommendations on how to dodge. Uh, i just get out of the way if I was you. And he flips the lever and both things start coming down. Can I grab the back of the wheel as it's going and kind of like ride it up? <laughs> uh, absolutely. Make me an acrobatics check. Eight. Oh. Uh, that is below your save DC, but so could you, uh, how do you fail this? Uh, so I attempt, I'm like, oh, I can do this. I'll, I'll just, I'll hang on to the back and go right over them. So I do that. But the wheel, I misjudge how the trajectory of the, how fast the wheel is going. So it goes like, whoop, and then right as it's coming down, it like sandwiches me, I assume. Uh, that sounds good to me. You're going to take... I suppose that's better than just grasping you're gonna and having your legs go back. 10 piercing damage. I am bloodied. <laughs> <laughs> Are you knocked out? Uh, no, 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 I'm still okay. Okay, excellent. The audience gasps in horror as you get sandwiched between these big arrays of spikes but as they come back they see that you're okay yeah i to to in in the sense of it still very much hurt me because i'm still a skin, skinny goblin boy i was able to like maneuver myself in between each of them but they're still very much cutting into me on the sides yeah would it do the thing where they like sandwich together and then yeah, they like, come back and you're gone yeah and then you just i'm still out. on the back of yeah. one of the things that came up <laughs> Uh, so the audience cheers, there, there's gasps of, of shock, and then when people realize that you're okay and just bleeding, they're like, hooray! Woo! I like the idea of, yeah, like, I go up with it, and mm -hmm. I'm gone, and the audience is like, whoa, where are you And then I fall down yeah. from it and roll out of it and go, yeah! Oh, no. <laughs> there's a hole in your hand. Yeah. <laughs> like, like daylight. Yeah. Ta -da! You can see the stage light through, yeah. Uh, so uh, Parvis goes, yeah, good enough! And then the music reaches its finale, and uh, you feel another lurch as the wheel starts to slow down, and you get pulled back. And then the, the curtain closes, and uh, Parvis helps you climb down and goes, ay 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 Shova, Christ, and Shova's there, and she goes, oh my goodness, you are not good at this, are you? Uh, and she casts, she's probably going to cast it at second level, and you regain 17 uh, points of, she, he, she cast a second level cure wounds on you. Okay. Oh my goodness. Both of you try to be better than that. I've only got so much healing magic, you know. I, I dodged, like, one. That was pretty good. I told you they'd be coming from the left, the right, the left, and both sides. Don't you listen, says Parvis? Uh, did wait? Did he say that? Did he did? I should listen. Me too. You're definitely gonna want to listen to what Parvis says because he's only gonna tell you once and very quickly. You, Avenir, has invented the paper bag. <laughs> procured the paper bag. <laughs> Show of hands this... you a paper bag. Consumed <laughs> the paper bag. Could you not pass out before the show, please? Come on, we've all got a job to do here. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> and while all of this is happening, you uh, you see the man with the guitar mm -hmm. uh, come out. And now he's not in his casual clothes anymore. He's got his 12-string guitar. Uh, he's dressed like a Rakdos. He's quite husky and got a big beard for a Rakdos performer, but uh, he's clearly there to sing. The theater goes, and the theater's dark. And as he, uh, one follow spot comes out on him as he walks out from the wings, and the theater goes, bananas for this guy. He's clearly the star of the show. Are we in the court of the Crimson King? He must be the gorilla. He, calm, he calmly Shut strolls up, up to the microphone at center stage and begins to play. And behind him, there's acrobats and jugglers tossing knives and spike clubs and stuff, and they're sort of dancing to his song. It's a musical number while they're setting up for the next acrobatic feat. Bling, 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 bling. I'm not much of a singer, so. <laughs> oh, the Boros Legion don't have a sense of humor. They just want to ruin your day. The Golgari are weird, and I don't like mushrooms. I hope they stay far away. The Simic might get you mixed up with a fish or a snake or some bird. And the Azorius only care about obeying the laws of the written word. Oh, but Arachnos is great. The cults wear nuts. If you're aroused about or a hackrobat, and if Arachnos himself comes to stop the show, the doors are locked. You got nowhere to go. 
da ling da ling ding ding Oh, the demir pretend they don't exist. That joke is boring and old. The Orzov only want your devotion, your life, and your ghost, and your gold. The gruel are a bunch of angry little nomads who spend too much time with pigs. The it are only tolerable if you're nowhere close to a lightning rig. Oh, but Arachnos is great, the cult's where it adds if you're a roustabout or a hackrobat. And if Rakdos himself comes to stop the show while the doors are locked, you've got nowhere to go! Boing, boing, ding, ding. And nobody knows what the Celestia does. <laughs> <laughs> the song concludes. I'm sure glad Mo is in here. <laughs> clapping, cheers. Oh, the song would have been the same if, if mm. Mo was here or not. And by the way, thank you very much to uh, Graham who wrote that song for me because I'm not much of a songwriter. That slaps. Uh, and, it was a bop. Uh, that's a good. Yeah, as the kids say, that song bopped. Yeah, and it was so a good ditty. He mm. walks out. And a Slap. roustabout runs up and gets him some water and takes his guitar and, and he's like, yeah, yeah, that went well. Uh, and uh, Parvis then looks at the two of you. All right, who's next? How much healing magic do you have left? I mean, if you're all as bad as him, probably not enough. So I'll go up. next. <laughs> good, good call. All right, uh, this will be the tightrope. <clears throat> so, do you want to change? No. <laughs> I think you'll, I think, I, I did a lot of deck space checks, so I think you'll kick ass at this. I mean, I didn't build my rogue this way. Uh oh. <laughs> this should be a class skill. Uh, yeah, but it turns out the Rakdos don't care and they think it's funny because there's a Rakdos. I mean, to be fair, it probably will be funny. Yeah. Uh, so Parvis says, okay, take this, and he hands you a long red and black striped pole with blades at either end. All right, so the secret is stay on the rope and just get from one side of the stage to another. Here are your blood packs. Good luck. Uh, so you, he points you up a ladder and you climb up this rickety ladder to a platform about 20 feet up the stage. Mm -hmm. Make me uh, paying attention to things that happened earlier in the session check. That would just be probably an intelligence save. Sure. 21. 21. Uh, with your keen knowledge of paying attention to things that happened earlier in the session, this is what this is the spotlights the goblin was testing when you came oh, in. Oh right, yeah. So uh, you get up to your platform. You can see that there's a long line that goes from uh, like a slack line that goes from one side of the stage to the other. Below you are dancers that are twirling long red silk ribbons, and their silk ribbons all have like huge scimitars at the end of them, you know, for added danger and excitement. Um, and, uh, Visualize reach and death touch. They're, they're, they're all getting ready and stretching, and they've got their ribbons ready. And uh, you can hear the stage. You can feel sort of the ambient temperature of the lighting go down as the stage goes dark again. Mm. And the stage lights come up. And you hear the ringleader. You can't see the ringleader. And you hear the ringleader say, Ah, my dear audience, I know you're having fun, and I'm sure you'll just fall for our next performer! And the stage lights come out. Avenir, you're on a tightrope above a stage. There's a swirling mass of ribbons and scimitars below you. Um, you just have to get from one side to the other. Um, so make I, me immediately make me an athletics check not to lose your balance and fall off. I've had this exact nightmare. <laughs> athletics? Athletics. Not acrobatics? This is just the raw strength not oh. to fall off. Oh, okay. It takes a lot of strength to walk on a tightrope. Oh, there Ten. you go. That is exactly your pass. <laughs> so you wobble mm -hmm. quite substantially, but the pole helps you out. You realize what the pole is for. Okay. Even though it's tipped with these ridiculous spikes on the end. And you, you know, shakily regain your balance. Mm -hmm. As the music starts playing, it's more of this, like, sort of upbeat, folksy, gogol bordello kind of stuff. The heels aren't helping. <laughs> we'll say you got to take your heels off because oh, that's, well, that's very generous. Even acro even professional acrobats wouldn't wear high heels mm. um, on a tightrope, and uh, you know, you professional there. acrobats like we are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, you stand there for a couple seconds. Mm -hmm. You just hear Parvis go, "Start walking, go!" So now you can make me an acrobatics check to start walking. Sixteen. Oh. That you get to start walking with a little bit of flair, in fact. Ooh. So describe walking across this tightrope for me. Uh, 
I think I would put a little English on my stride. Mm. Uh, when I was very young, my parents put me in dance lessons. I had one lesson because I couldn't walk right. <laughs> but, you know, I think Avenir has gotten over that by now. <laughs> and he's just got a little, you know, he's, he's six signatures into this, and that's, some, and that's a sense of accomplishment you can detect in his stride. Oh, you look very good in your fishnets, too. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, your legs look great. I'm feeling confident. I have gams. Uh, As the kids say. You get four to, <laughs> you get four to a few feet, mm -hmm. and you hear Parvis yell, Look alive! And you can see, swinging from the fly gallery, there's an enormous halberd that is going to maybe hit you, maybe come in front of you, maybe come behind you. What do you want to do? I would like it to go behind me. Well, then I would suggest you make me uh, an acrobatics check to make sure that happens. I've done this in Dark Souls. Just forward B. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Good old Sen. <laughs> forward B. 19. 19. All right. Describe your epic success. I... How epic is this success? A I mean, 19's... I would say a 19's pretty darn good. Okay. I uh, do a... I roll forward, mm -hmm. one leg over top. <gasps> How like, exciting. Like I've seen them do in field ball, mm. or planes ball, when they do a bicycle kick. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, excellent. Uh, the audience reacts really well to this. You feel like a bit of a breeze as this huge halberd like swings behind you, and like maybe that breeze helps you go forward a little bit in your roll, and you do a pirouette, and you land back on your feet, or are you like, crowd, like on the low on the rope? Uh, on my feet. You're on your feet, so you basically do like a flip almost. Yeah. How very exciting. The audience cheers! I try not to think about it. They're super excited. You hear some hollers and some woohoos and some nice gams! <laughs> <laughs> Don't die! Good job so far! All right. Uh, now what do you want to do? Uh, I would like to get to the other side, please, All as right. Parvis has instructed me. Yes. <laughs> so you keep walking. Mm -hmm. uh, you walk with that incident, and you hear... Next one! And you see another halberd swing towards you. How do you want to avoid this one? Let's see. It was either forward, backward, or... Can't go over top. Let's go backward for variety. Oh, excellent. Make me an athletics check, or an acrobatics check. Or, wait. Would I be able to swing around? Like, swing, like, jump and then land back on the... Like, use the, the pole as a... To, like, whip yourself around over yeah. underneath mm. the thing. Oh, that yeah, sounds very cool. exciting, and I bet people would love it. Oh my god. Wow. 21? <gasps> we are killing this. Oh my god. <laughs> Avenir, amazing. You do... You describe how this happens. This is a fantastic success. I... Uh... Let's see. Up on tiptoes, and then... Put the, uh... Bend down. I've been doing stretching before... Before Island Ball. Mm -hmm. The balance down, or the balance pull down, one hand off, put it around the other way. Where's the, where's the, where's the Omega going to go? Yep, that's the angle of momentum. Or, and then swing around underneath as the halberd blade goes over top. And uh, you would have your body out and then in to speed up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then back up on top. Fantastic. So tuck it, roll and tuck yeah. would be the opposite. Wow, that looks great. The audience cheers and gasps even louder. And somebody says, wow! And, uh, and Parvis goes, nice! Okay, here comes the fire! And suddenly the rope is on the fire. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to do? Not be on fire. <laughs> uh, advance. All right. Uh, could you make, uh, how fast do you want to advance? Faster than the fire. Uh, in that case, uh, I would like you to make me some sort of acrobatics check for moving extremely fast and not losing your balance. 19? Uh, I'm going to say you make it, uh, and uh, ha you're at the end. Do you want to walk gracefully? Do you want to do a jump? Do you want to do a flying leap? Do you want to do a pirouette? How do you dismount onto the other platform on the other side? Uh, Avenir is used to looking at people when they shout at him, uh -oh. you know? So when Parvis starts yelling at me, uh, Avenir probably almost reflexively turns around, mm. notices the fire coming, and uh, 
you know when Rowan Atkinson gets afraid of something, you know the face he makes where he's just like, oh no. Mm -hmm. um, that and then uh, visualize V2 Ghazi, the tree. <laughs> Are you particularly what religious? Would a, no, no, but I just, for some reason, you know, when you're, you're about to die hmm. and your brain just latches onto something, I imagine Mo Lander saying, visualize the tree. And I'm like, yes, what would a tree do when faced with fire? Burn down. <laughs> <laughs> you have to dance away from the fire. That's the only way to avoid so you're gonna stand you're there. Uh, and then I, uh, with a 19, I backflip. Oh, Ooh. excellent. Uh, some part of my brain is just like, it's okay. <laughs> Here, let me take let me take over for a sec, bud. The yeah. frontal lobe <laughs> shut down. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the 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 cortex just is we shh 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 shh. Sh. Not now. Mm -hmm. I, I got this. I got yeah. this. <laughs> All right, muscles, take my lead. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and you gracefully backflip onto the other platform as the last of the rope crumbles away onto the dancers below you. The music swells to a conclusion and people cheer so loud. Everybody's having a great time. People are very impressed. Oh, good. And the curtain draws to a close. And uh, you can climb down. Holy, holy crap, Avenir. <laughs> Just lie down like the, the ladder. I Hand over hand, hand over hand. Okay, we're on the ground. Keep going down and fall asleep. Do you actually, like, lay down like that? Y yes. Shova runs over to you and is like, are you okay? Huh. He, He's okay. Shova, like, if, if she touches me, there's just, like, a squidging sponge noise of sweat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Parvis comes and kicks you. No, I'll, uh, five more minutes. No, get up, get up, get up. Clear the stage, clear the stage. We're in, we're going to be in the way. Come on, move it, move it, move it. By the way, that was very impressive. That was better, much better than I thought that they, that, uh, that you would be. I've heard that a lot lately. These are yours. <laughs> the, oh, the blood packs. Yeah. Blood packs. All right. No, yeah. I mean, maybe you've lost a couple of points for not bleeding a little bit on stage, but, you know, it made up for it by, you know, you know, the, the success at which you rolled. Uh, so... You know, after a couple of seconds, you clear out to the back of the stage, and you see, uh, you see the man with the beard and the guitar mm -hmm. come out again. Except this time, he doesn't have his guitar. Uh, the theater goes quiet, and the lights dim, and the and the and suddenly rapturous applause as the singer comes back out. <clears throat> now, let's see if I can do this one. Ah, I admit that in the past it has been dull here. The implicit may skipped us, it is true. But you'll find that nowadays, we're not so mayonnaise. We've got subways and apples that bewitch. We're not just some backwoods abyss. And fortunately, we have our little circus that fills your empty lives with some purpose. And dear guests, please don't laugh, because you know our rents are half. Oh, poor unfortunate sixth. Boring indeed. Officials lying to be funner how they want to get the gold. And should we help them? Hell no. Poor unfortunate sixth. So sad. So true. Tourists flocking to an attraction while they ruin Zona, Zona 2. Should we help them? Hell no. The whole audience shouts. Applause. Mm. Cheers. Rapturous, thunderous stomping. And uh, I get shuffled away. And Parvis looks at you, Enor, and says, You ready to fly? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now I'd like to uh, roll things back just a bit. Okay. To about the point where uh, everyone is just very clapping along and cheering for the arrival of our, uh, of our good musician friend. Okay. At which point, Enor, very carefully steps back into the shadows of the side stages where no one notices and casts silent image. Okay. How does that work? On myself. Okay. Such that uh, it provides a perfect replica of my form. Okay. So yes, I will. So what happens when someone tries to touch it? Well, you shouldn't try to touch it. Well, because Parvis is going to try to touch it and hand it a rope. A rope, eh? A rope and a harness. <laughs> I'm... 
<laughs> so at that point, I believe the silent image will disappear, correct? I uh, don't believe it disappears, but the guy will know. Yeah. <laughs> I'll slowly mime. Uh, he's going to try to grab at you. Yeah, okay. What is this trickery? we got to get you on stage. Where is he? What magic is this? Which two of you are filling in here? we got to get going. It, it, it's me. Just trust me on this one. We can't haul an image up on the stage. It's either you or someone else. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. But the and you image can, can fly. And you can, but it can't wear a robe. Well. Or hold a chain, which is what he's trying to hand it to it. So, like, he's making furious signals to, like, stretch for time. Suck and, it like, up, being and, orchid and, out and a couple of dancers are like, oh, crap. And, like, go out there and, like, they're doing a little, like, filler number. And then you suddenly hear the audience be like, or the orchestra just go, and he's like, what is with this silent image? And he's still trying to trap and strap into the harness. Look, this is not going to work. It's got to be you or it's got to be a person who's going up here. Let's go. If someone wants to force me into those, into that vest, then that, I guess that's what not, happens. Not bloodied ass Nog like walks over and he's like, I will bear this burden. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, hand me the rope. <laughs> Okay. Uh, all right. So here's what we're going to do. You're going to put this harness on. Okay. In you... my final words, I curse Enor. Well, you got, you got well healed up, though, didn't you? Yes, yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm all right. I've got 24 hit points. You'll probably be fine. I have I have an ace up my sleeve in case I end up right. got... Oh, here's your Here's your spiked whip. Wait, what, what is the whip for? Well, you see three other acrobats climbing into similar harnesses. Each, each with a handler, because you're going to be doing a little bit of an Ariel's act, Nog. Okay. Uh, so he, here's the deal, says Parvis. We're going to swing you around in the air. Don't die. Is that, that's all the instruction? I was so prepared this time. I was uh, going to write down everything. Uh, yeah, Parvis is kind of bad at his job. Uh, so anyhow, as you were trying to contemplate what that might mean, uh, you, uh, you suddenly shoot up into the air because Parvis is hauling ah. you off. Ah, and, uh, now you're hanging in the air. You've got your, uh, your chain whip. Mm hmm Uh, so, uh, you'll, that'll just roll like a regular, uh, melee weapon roll, by the way. Okay. Which is relevant to you in a second. <laughs> okay. Uh, and, uh, and you can hear, uh, da as this improvised song comes to a close, you see two dancers rush back out and shoot you very dirty looks, Enor. Uh, and then you and you see you hear the ringleader say, "Oh my thrill seekers, it's time! It's almost time for our show to end. Can you believe it? I know time just flies around here." He's very good at his job. <laughs> and the curtains part. And suddenly you are swinging violently to the right. <laughs> uh, so make me a posing in midair and looking cool roll. Uh, Whatever stat you think. Athletics. Works. That would be an eight. You don't look very cool. Yeah. In fact, you look like you're not happy to be here because one of your friends uh, tried to screw you over by getting out of his responsibility. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you look less than graceful. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'm more of a guy in a wheel getting hit by spikes kind of performer. Uh, so, uh, so you're flying through the air and you zoom back and forth a few times. How are you feeling? Uh, are you spinning in circles and up and down. Goblins aren't like, I mean... So goblins within the Izzet are like good at flying, but I chose the cavalry because I'm uh, I'm actually kind of not good with heights. Uh, so uh, Nog is not having a great time. <laughs> mm. uh, could could you make me a not throwing up roll? That'll be a Constitution check, I think. That makes sense. Mm. Uh, Twenty one. Twenty one. You uh, clear your mind, and I assume you don't. And with the twenty-one, you I probably think, don't need to I, make further checks. I check. picture V two Gazi. What would the tree what do? What would the tree, tree do? do? Not throw up. <laughs> uh, so uh, you're getting the hang of this. You're up. You're down. You're posing. Do you do a little like with the with me with the whip a little bit? Uh, yeah, I I like start swinging it around like this, uh, and then I like. Kind of wrap it around my like 
like arms like a boa and like and and I guess start like swimming in midair because that's the most I can think of as an aerialist is um, pretend I'm swimming through the air. That sounds good. The other the other three acrobats look good. Mm -hmm. uh, they look better than you, but that's fine. Can what are they doing out of curiosity? Uh, that maybe doing, should like, I emulate them? They're doing Cirque du Soleil, Soleil style, like feats of like uh, flexibility and strength. Like some of them are doing that thing where they sort of fold themselves in on their body and like have the whip out, and then they're like doing like. You know, like almost like yoga poses in midair. Like yeah. it's it's very impressive their their uh, body control, self awareness, and strength. Yeah. Um, Meanwhile, I'm doing the butterfly in midair. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the audience is maybe less than appreciative of uh, of this. Like they're still enjoying themselves, but they're like, mm, that one's not very good. Well, at least uh, they're not taking help. Damage. What's the the aerial ribbon thing called? Where you roll your like you could, they can roll themselves up. It's just up? like called the ribbon. Yeah. Is it? Okay, this is yeah. adapted from that. So okay, cool. I spent yeah. a lot the of silks, I yeah. I spent a lot of or yeah the silks. I spent a lot of time looking at pictures of Cirque du Soleil, mm. trying to figure <laughs> out how I could make it evil. Uh, so anyhow, uh, are you feeling pretty comfortable? Yes. Not Nog is getting more like a bit a better hang. Like he's getting the hang of it literally. Uh, good. Uh, the music starts to get a little faster, mm -hmm. and uh, you, uh, Parva says, All right, now the show is truly beginning! And you lurch to the right again, and you fly right past another acrobat who lashes at you with her spiked whip as you pass. Do you want to make an attack roll or a dodge roll? Uh, reflexively, Nog would attack back. All right, uh, make me an attack. Okay. Am I prof A whip is basic... It's or a simple? Weapon. Yeah. It's a simple weapon? Yeah. Okay, so I would have proficiency with it then. Uh, that would be a uh, 14. A 14. Uh, your, and she rolls a 16. So both your whips impact with each other and you feel a strip. Uh, you feel it like going across your exposed torso. And hold on, I need to make some. Woof! You take. Five piercing damage. Okay. <laughs> and she takes. What is the uh, the dice? On a... It's a, a uh, it's a two d four plus one. And she takes. Oh, I didn't pay attention to my roll. Uh, she takes five piercing damage as well. Uh, and uh, and that is uh, and uh, blood spurts from both of you in a wide arc and falls down onto the stage and the audience cheers and gasps. And goes, yeah, woo, that's more like it. And they clap. And uh, the music starts to get faster. And Parvis goes, yeah, you totally got it. I believe in you. Well, I mean, I don't believe in you a whole lot. But I believe in you more than I believe in that bondage guy over there. So uh, this one's probably going to get a little bit more real. <laughs> and you suddenly feel yourself dropping very low. You quickly, you quickly lose out a total. And then you get skimmed along the bottom of the stage. Okay. What do you want to do? You're like in the air, but you're flying across, like you're going low. Um, is there like any sort of objects nearby as they I'm kind of skimming totally around? Cleared the stage they totally cleared the stage. They totally cleared the stage. For safety reasons. Can I like, are there are there like any like uh, braziers or pillars or anything like that nearby? No. no? There is in fact though another acrobat uh, that's uh, uh, doing the same move opposite you, and she's heading towards you with a giant grin on her face. Uh, by the tiger. <laughs> <laughs> Can I? Uh, is this this isn't the same person that attacked me? No, before, this is right? this is a different one. But they all there's three of them, and they all have whips. And they, they all, all have the same weapon as you. Okay, I do the blender and like start <laughs> whipping around <laughs> in a circular motion. All right, Ooh, what would that Simon Belmont very, do? Yeah, that very exciting. The... Make me an attack roll. <laughs> Uh, ooh, that would be a 24. Oh, well, my acrobat uh, was not expecting that and, f and like, critically failed her roll. Uh, so, uh, roll me 2d4 plus 1 piercing damage. Okay. 2, 6, uh, plus 1, you said? Yeah. Uh, so that would be 7. All right, so... Could I also... If you want, yeah. ...use my, uh, my cavalier ability, which is Unwavering Mark. Mm-hmm. Um, which is, uh... How does this work again? Uh, it has disadvantage on any attack roll that doesn't target me. Wait, hold on. No, that's not what I want. Don't. 
I don't mark it. Never mind. Okay. I'm, I don't want to be a tank in this scenario. No. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I'm going to say she's so surprised by your Belmont whip, which is a move no one's ever seen in this campaign before, because that would be crossing universes. I'm going to call it the Nog Whip, then. Uh, Trademarked. It's, it's, it's my official move. <laughs> uh, you're going to get an attack on her. She's going to bleed profusely. You get her right down the arm. Describe what happens. Uh, so as, uh, as that whip kind of thing happens because I assume she's like we're both sort of flying towards one another mm -hmm. I hit her uh, I like <laughs> I don't know why this has become Nog's move but I like like scoop up some of the blood on her as it's going by and I like <laughs> slick my hair back <laughs> with a yen and finger guns back to the audience like it's my move <laughs> I've invented it for this <laughs> the audience loves it yeah cheers applause Woo! looking better out there people yell all right uh, so that's fantastic. And now the world spins before you because you're in this nog spin and you realize your trajectory is changing again. You are now shooting straight up into the air and there is an acrobat right above you, grinning, looking excited because you're starting to put on a better show and this will be better for both of you. Mm -hmm. And she is lashing out at you with her spiked whip. What do you want to do? Attack, defend, or just pose? Uh, can I attempt to like whip the whip? And like entangle them in some way. Uh, sure, if you want to. I have no idea how that would work, but I want to attempt to do that. Uh, make me. I think that would have to be. What role would that be? I think that'd have to be an acrobatics role because I'm, you're. It could be like a an attack with disadvantage or something like that. Yeah, because you're flying through the air. Yes. This person's directly above you. So you've got to throw against the momentum that you're going, right? Yes. Because like otherwise it's going to fall back and hit you in the face. Yeah. Because uh, you are moving quite fast mm -hmm. because I don't know they have some sort of magical pulley technology that lets this happen. Uh, and she is zooming towards you uh, with haste and delight. So I would, yeah, I would make me an attack roll with disadvantage. Okay. So my first one was twelve. The second one is the uh, so seventeen. So, but. But you have disadvantage. So I rolled 2d. The first one was 12 in the first one, and the second one was 18. Okay. So. Hmm. I don't want to let you succeed on this. <laughs> <laughs> I feel I... like you should be hoisted to it by your own petard. Uh, also, my acrobat rolled a nat 20. Oh, I mean, that Ooh. could do it. <laughs> so I'm going to say that you throw your whip towards her. Okay. She throws her whip towards you. Yeah. They are both entangled in one another, and unfortunately, because of how gravity works, you fall into the whips and you take three damage from All that. Right. Uh, but uh, now you're both out whips. So now you're defenseless. Well, I was like trying to like whip a Kai, you know, and then like they entangle and then we start spinning around. You know, in this some like, sort of embrace. Oh, right, this was an up and vertical scenario. Yeah, this is, this is not a side to side. That would have worked great with the Belmont whip, but this is like, smash! Ah, yeah. So maybe your whips get tangled together, and now you're brought, and now you're stuck together for the rest of the performance. Okay. She's annoyed. Yeah. That's not supposed to happen. Uh, and in fact, uh, now that you're both stuck together, do you want to try to disentangle your whips? Uh, is there the potential to dance around together? No. Uh, try to communicate with her and see what happens. Say, hey, hey, uh, you know, this, uh, this whip business is, is probably pretty cool. You know what would be cooler is we do some sort of macabre dance. Uh, this isn't supposed, this, don't you know our choreography? This isn't what we're supposed to be doing. I absolutely do not know your choreography. I've got brought on 45 minutes ago. All right, fine then. Uh, let's spin, and we'll try to use centrifugal force to get us separated because we need to separate for the finale. Oh, uh, okay, let's do that. All right, make me. That would be a dexterity check for sure. Yeah, uh, that would be an eleven. Uh, let's see what her dex check is. Oh, her dex check is very good because she's specked out as an acrobat, so she spins incredibly gracefully and sort of does like a Beelman spin, with, like you know your figure skating, and uh, and uh, uses that to really wrench your energy apart. Uh, you uh, do look considerably less graceful, but by the grace of her success, uh, pull this move off. But now you're like spinning and seriously off kilter, where she's able to like control her movement and slow it down by readjusting her body. So make me an, uh, an acrobatics check to get yourself back into uh, a proper alignment. Uh, six. You end up upside down. Yeah! <laughs> you are now upside down. 
Uh, and uh, uh, better than Inside Out. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, it's gonna happen in these shows. <laughs> the music is starting to reach its climax because yeah. she did say we need to get back into position. Uh, your feet are in the air, and uh, suddenly you notice that uh, the um, the stage is moving towards you very, very fast. Could you make me a perception check? Uh, nine. Uh, the stage sure is moving towards you fast. Yep. Am I just is like? It, am I falling? Can yes. I look at the rope? Oh. Yeah. Here, look up. What do you think you see? What do I? Sorry. Yeah. Why don't you look around what do you, and, and uh, uh, like uh, describe what you see as you're falling through the air? So the rope is no longer attached. No, no, to no. Me. You're attached. Ah. You just—they appear to have let go of the rope. Uh, I look and I assume I see lots of shrieking around as the other performers are also falling down too. They are falling, but they are like. Yeah, a little bit more poised to do it. Uh, meanwhile, Nog is kind of doing like the splits in midair and like twirling and twirling and twirling around. Um, and I guess uh, scre like, ch like screaming Valencia, Valencia, Valencia <laughs> over and over. I'm so sorry. Oh God, Valencia, you'll be without a dad. Valencia, Valencia. <laughs> Please forgive me. Why the? Why didn't Enor die? Why was it me? <laughs> it should have been. It Enor. should have been Enor. <laughs> that sounds particularly dramatic. Uh, a particularly perceptive person might notice the other acrobats laughing, uh, because just as your head is about to hit the stage, you are suddenly wrenched hard with an almighty, like crank, as they stop you about a, eighteen inches off the floor, and suddenly flames erupt from the stage because this is in fact part of the big finale and then you go the last 18 inches very gently and sort of just like your head touches the ground and then it folds up and then you're just lying there as there's just flames shooting out and there's dancers on the stage and the people with the silks and the scimitars are back and then like the orchestra music is swelling and the and the ringleader says thank you all thank you all thank you for coming to the masaaki gorilla theater troupe for social commentary and death-defying stunts, please stop at the, the concession on your way out. We have a variety of local wines, beers, and ciders available for purchase. Thank you! Ah, cheering. The curtain closes. This is going on. Nog attempts to, like, push his sphincter back down. <laughs> it's like in his esophagus. <laughs> like, back, back down to his rectum. <laughs> and Parvis walks over to you looks down and says, wow, that was great for someone who didn't know what they were doing. And you're all alive, which means you can come to the after party. Even you, you coward. <laughs> <laughs> so it's okay. I understand if some people aren't ready for special effects performances, but your kids are going to love them. Nog, like, like, gets up dizzily and walks over to you. And he's like, I'm glad that I could shoulder that burden for you. <laughs> You did great! Uh, Shelva comes over to you, looks you over, and casts a Cure Light Wounds on you, uh, and you regain 8 HP. 8? Eight? 8. All right, back at 24. Well, I'm going to get out of this corset. So back to the costume department then? Yeah, I suppose so. I really don't want to give this back, but I, this was also Magenta her thesis. will kill you. Yeah, this was her <laughs> thesis project, so I guess I'll return it. All right, so uh, you make your way back to the costume room. The spike whip is good. The sausage is evil. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Yeah. I have some stuff there to there watch when I get home. Yep. No, you don't. It's, it's terrible. <laughs> it is sure as 70s out there. Yeah, right? I imagine. Yeah, so you get to the costume room and you see uh, Valencia there. She's eating beef jerky. So mm -hmm. she sees me walk in. Probably cut, like, cut, cut, cut up and, like, like, I guess probably less cut up because you cured wounds mm -hmm. on me. Uh, but I have at least dried blood probably all over myself and probably the costume as well. Uh, and uh, I go, hey, did you miss me? And I, like, wave at my beautiful dog to which she, uh, she kind of, like, looks at me. And then attempts to like lick some of the blood off and then like spits because goblin blood tastes nasty and then like lays down again. Oh. Well, uh, you return your costumes with uh, very little, uh, very little uh, show to magenta. Mm. You get unchanged, so 
Uh, she looks at you and goes, this thing doesn't even look like you used it. Believe me, the outside is much more pristine than the inside right now after those first two performances. Uh-huh. She just takes your costume and puts it in the laundry bag. So uh, I think we can put everybody's normal costumes back up on the screen. You all get disrobed. Uh, and after and after a few minutes, she goes, all right, congr that, was, that was good. I watched some of it. Uh, I was very impressed. Uh, Oh, thank you. She looks at Enor, and you tried hard. That's what counts. Do I get a participation ribbon or anything like that? I mean, you didn't die. You know what? That's a good partici- Life is a pretty good participation ribbon. We, we here in the, in the Cult of Rakdos believe in making the most out of life and doing what brings you joy and bringing other people's joy. And it turns out most other people are at the most joy when they think they're going to watch somebody else die. So you know what? That's just that's just nature. That's the the average Ravnican citizen, and who are we to judge? Speaks. That's Rakdos's job. I had a dissociative episode. Well, you looked great doing it. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, after, so you get out of the costume room, and is there like uh, a shower or anything down here? There that are you can, some like, showers. Wash up a little bit. You yeah. can you can wash up, uh, and then after you leave, because this is the last show of the night, they've turned the stage. Uh, into an after party and they've got like beer and wine and all the performers are there and all of the people like sort of in the cult are there who maybe aren't performers but help put on the shows and just like guests of the show which now includes the three of you Ooh. congratulations Yay. Uh, and there's and the orchestra is like a lot of them are drinking and carousing but some of them are down there playing their instruments they're all taking they're handing off, so, you know, Jamming. music is going, mm. you know, but they're playing their own tunes. Maybe they're doing some King's Icor and the War War covers, because mm -hmm. they are very popular. Uh, so, and it's also a free open bar. Ooh, wicked. Uh, yeah. There's uh, red and white wine, uh, wheat beer, dark beer, and pilsner, and there's cider that was brewed in the Cardinia Mountains. Ooh. Oh, the good apples. I'm going to grab some of that cider and then try to impress some of the uh, acrobatists by doing a little magic for them. Oh, yes. well, then let's see how that works. I I'm would, an acrobat. I would love to actually just get are you Are you impressing a lady acrobat or a man acrobat? Let's call it a man acrobat. Hi, I'm an acrobat. Hi! Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Got a trick I want to show you guys. See if you want to incorporate it into one of your shows. Oh, okay. Okay, I will cast Silent Image once again and uh, proceed to have my image rip off its own arm and beat itself to death with it. But there's... <laughs> Does blood come out? Real blood? I mean, blood comes to the sides and everything gets very, very dirty here. But yeah, there's none on the floor. Oh, that's great, but there's no blood on the floor. How are the audience supposed to know what's really happening? Mm, maybe a little bit of practical effects could work on this. Mm, you should go tell Mr. Nishi about that, although we are kind of an old-fashioned troupe. But uh, hey, hook me up if you ever want to do any more magic. I'll, se I'll send the letter. Uh... I guess they're into practical effects. Yeah. yeah. I don't blame them. They're old-fashioned. You uh, get a lot of things for free. Mm. They've just got one performer in the back named Joran Hansen. <laughs> 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 Actually, I do have a question for you. Oh, yeah. Where do you get those blood packs? Oh, we make them in-house. What kind of blood do you use? Oh, it's a proprietary blend of uh, beet juice and uh, sugar syrup. And uh, thickening gel agents like cornstarch and stuff. We find it's the most realistic and blends best with real blood. Oh, I, I mean, I appreciate mm. that you don't like just, it's not just actual blood. That's I cool. mean, there's a lot of actual blood. That's why we uh, hire a doctor whenever we go through town. That makes sense. Uh, we how, should how, how many drinks in would you have to be before somebody just treats one of those um, blood packs like a Capri Sun? <laughs> <laughs> just boop. I mean, I think I'm four at this point, so... Oh, there's already people. There's already like acrobats who are like playing around like with like the the fake blood packs that haven't been used in tonight's performance because they've got they just they're it's like somebody's job in this theater troupe to be making fake blood packs, right? Right, right, that, that's right. It's part of you know the costuming department. Yeah, probably like apprentice work in costuming. Yeah, yeah exactly. So yeah, the people are like Bleh. everybody's having a good time, hmm. right? Because people are cutting loose. They've had a very successful six-day run. I was just a little worried you had to provide your own when you were joining up. 
<laughs> no, 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 no. If you join the cult of Rakdos, we take care of everything that needs to, that we need to do to put on a good show, especially here at the Masaaki Guerrilla Theater Troupe. We just usually <laughs> don't let anyone on stage. <laughs> well, good to know that we're in. Um, and speaking of being in, we should probably go find Mr. Nishi, eh? Mm. Right. Get this whole thing signed, the reason we came. Mm. I have the oddest full-body cramp. I don't know what I did today. <laughs> but it's like You're every muscle me. in my body just went... <laughs> I just fell 30 feet and then stopped instantaneously. Yeah, that usually happens when you fall 30 feet. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, roll me, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Roll me a d6. Goodbye. Two. One. One. Okay. Uh, we'll do two and then we'll do one. Uh, while you guys are looking around for Mr. Nishi, mm -hmm. uh, Rin comes over to you. Oh, hey. Hi. Uh, she she was standing with two other Rakdos members, drinking mm -hmm. some red wine, spots you, and uh, come on, comes on over and says, oh, Avenir. Yeah. I'm extremely impressed with your dedication to your job. Thank you. That was... I need to make out with somebody right now. Yeah! I've never done that before. I would have been quite shocked if you told me you had, but I would believe it. Anyhow, uh, let's go to the bathrooms. Yeah! <laughs> Avenir will not be appearing in the rest of this scene. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's resolve number one now. Uh, uh two. Two. Yeah. Number two. Mm, yeah. Uh, you, somebody you know comes over to you. He's middle-aged, not very good at his job, and very relaxed. <laughs> What's his name again? Uh, shoot, I didn't bring my other book. It's ding, it's, it's dude who works at the front desk. Who keeps losing all of our stuff at the Boros Legion? Oh, uh, 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 uh. it's Blesnord. 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 Oh, right. Didn't they throw Blesnord in the? Oh, uh, uh -oh. oh, hey, Blesnord. Nog, how's it going? What are you doing here? I didn't know you were so cool. Oh well, uh, you know, still doing that job I was doing before. Mm. Um, and uh, I, I guess they needed some help, so I. I put on my acrobatting chops and helped out here in re in return for a signature. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, some of the acrobats tonight were pretty dead, pretty darn terrible, but that's okay. I still had fun. And I know a lot of people here, and it's just cool to hang out. Uh, anyhow, the funniest thing happened to me at work. I got this lady named Agantha Sludge came in, and she started, like, reading us the riot act, and she was just, oh, like... Yeah. She's like, oh my god, you are contributing to the delinquency of children. And she demanded to see Commander Acra. And she just like got super mad uh, and uh, said that she was going to have my badge and all that. But it turned out Commander Acra wasn't mad because she knows I didn't have enough time off to go to the Cardinia Mountains. And also because this sludge lady described the complainant as a cheeky goblin and his foul-smelling war dog. So anyhow, the commander wants to have a word with you when you get back. <laughs> Bye now! Uh, I always knew my youthful exuberance would come back to haunt me in my career. <laughs> That's so Damn good. it. I deserve this. <laughs> Nog no, no, goes back to the bar and orders like three like glasses of the Pilsner. <laughs> it's Listen. like, tonight's a bust. I might lose my job tomorrow, so let's turn up. Well, just when you get back, you don't necessarily have to go back till after the signature thing is over. We can't stop questing until, <laughs> until it's over. Oh god, I have to go back to work after this is done. <laughs> oh. Uh, Hope you have vacation days left. You don't get to do vacation any Vacation days? Uh, because you're busy. Uh, do you want to roll me a d4, Enor? I, a d4? Oh. Yeah. Because we're knocking off encounters. Two. Two. Uh, oh, guess who you see. <laughs> Is you... it Beppus? No. Oh <laughs> man. I'd be like, Beppus, what are you doing here? But it's close. You see some rich-looking kids, uh. one of whom is blonde and pale, uh. 
and shitty. <laughs> and, uh, and it's definitely Ogavin. And he looks at you and goes, ugh. And then pretends not to see you. <laughs> That's <fair>. <laughs> <laughs> You want to try and talk to him? Hello, Mr. Gobran. Uh, oh. And he's with a bunch of his, like, crappy friends. <laughs> and they're, like, trying to, like, talk to the, to the, to the, uh, to the acrobats. And they're like, oh, what, what was your name again? What do you want? Oh, have you tried the cider here? It's great. No, I could, I was, if I was going to drink the cider, I drank it in Cornong. Oh. True, it is a bit fresher there. I didn't know you were a Masaki Gorilla fan, though. Please, this is the only social engagement of any worth right now in the entirety of the 6th District. And, you know, riches, boredom, my life is so very fraught. But you got it at dinner. That's good. Oh, no, I did have to go to the dinner. My grandmother was, well, she was my grandmother, but uh, we don't have to see her again till next duopsony, so... Mm. Anyhow, please leave me alone now. Okay. <laughs> Kids of shit. <laughs> He's awful. Kids of shit. <laughs> uh, okay, now, uh, there is somebody else coming up to you, in mm. fact. Uh, she is a short girl with short, uh, like, bobbed hair and big round glasses, and she is uh, wearing uh, black and blue robes and she has tall boots on and she has a notepad out and she comes up to you and says hello i'm franca dobrek i'm the arts and culture reporter for the sixth district times picayune mm. hey, it's very interesting to see a member of the azoria senate here yeah it's a neat show oh can i quote you on that i mean yes excellent and what's your full name <laughs> enor mm-hmm that's it. We we don't generally have last names. Oh, okay, excellent. What part? What department of the Azoria Senate do you work for? Oh, oh, if you're looking for an official quotation on that, that's going to be different. You'll have to submit a 73 Mark II to the uh, 16th Guild uh, office, and uh, I'll be able to get that back to you in three weeks' time, should it show up in triplicate. Perfect. I'll just use the quote you gave me of, it's a neat show. Thank you very much. Here's my business card. It was a pleasure to meet you. Thank you, Miss... Franca Dobrik, Arts and Culture Reporter, 6th District Times, Picayune. Frank Dobrik. All right. Thank you very much. And then she goes off and goes off into the crowd to get more information mm -hmm. for her story. <clears throat> uh, Nog. Yeah. While you're at the bar. Yeah. Parvis comes up to you. <clears throat> He's very drunk. Oh, so that, what a coincidence, because that's me too. Hey, man. You did a great job tonight. You did a great job. The way you spanned the thing, that was... That was... I, I thought you were going to die, and then I was like, no, he's going to live. And then I thought for sure you were going to die again, but you didn't die. I know. I thought I was going to die that whole time too. Oh, my God. Let's do shots. <laughs> Clank. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> To losing my job tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> uh, hey. Yeah. Uh, not not that I'm not enjoying the, all this, but do you know where Mr. Nishi is? Oh yeah, he's over there somewhere. Let me take you to him. Let's go. Oh yeah, you needed to do a thing or something, right? Sign the thingy. Oh, do you have the thingy? Uh, I, Valencia had it, didn't she? <laughs> Yeah, she should have one now. Okay, one, yeah. yeah. Uh, so Valencia well, is with you again. Yeah, all right. I, I I like do the whistle and Valencia like who's been resting over in this corner like comes over and uh, with with it in her mouth. All right. Well, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Is Valencia gonna have to hold your mustache later? <laughs> Probably. I took. The, I gave the mustache <sighs> back. I assumed it was part of the costume. <laughs> uh, are you gonna collect Enor on your way? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Enor. Look, the the paper. Uh, yeah, we should get that signed before things get too out of hand. Do you know where Avenir is? I, last I saw him, he was going off somewhere with that Rakdos chick. Oh. We, we should go find him first, probably, yeah? Eh. He seemed like he's having a good time. What would Vitugazi do? <laughs> Vitugazi would definitely encourage a multitude of numbers. Be paper, and then get signed. Right. 
in triplicate. Triple means three. Mm -hmm. We should go find our friend. Sounds good. All right, we go look for Avenir. Uh, okay, you didn't. You weren't party to any of their conversation. Where do you want to look? Um, I ask around and see here if anybody knows where a very talented hacker bat went off with another girl. I ask if anyone's seen where Rin has gone, because th didn't didn't you say she went off with Rin? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a couple people are like, oh, I think I saw her heading uh, downstairs. Uh, and I say, okay, right, thank you very much, and we start heading downstairs. As we as we walk downstairs, I'll I'll remind you that you do know that these are magic things, and they do get signed on every one, right? Yeah, but I mean, we've done it all as a group. I'd hate for him to feel excluded. I agree. Just <laughs> want to make sure that everyone knows that we all remember that. We yeah, all that, remember that. That everyone is here. All the people <laughs> getting things signed are here at this very moment. Oh, I, I meant magic thing. Yes! Yes! Everyone who matters is here! <laughs> oh my god. It's I the hope biggest Surge watches this and gets mad at me. Avenir! Where are you? It's the biggest cultural night of the year! Everyone who matters <laughs> is, is here! here. <laughs> Avenir! Where are you? We gotta get the paper signed. It's very oh quiet God. downstairs. Mm -hmm. Avenir, you can hear them coming towards you, but you don't have to respond to them. Where are you, buddy? We need to get this thing signed. It's not signed in triplicate if it's not at least three of us there. No, no, you, uh, you count. <laughs> Maybe, maybe he's not down here. Mm. I'll somewhere else. be right back. Rin looks at you from the uh, from the couch in Nishi's office and says, "Don't take long. We Rakdos get bored easily." I'll give you a wink and licks her lips. <laughs> She's the snake. <laughs> get, get, open the door. Slam the door. <laughs> oh, hey, Avenir. Hi. What's up? We got to get the thing signed. We did the job, so now we got to do the job. Right, yes, let's go and do that quickly. Make me a perception check. Uh, that would be a one, natural. <laughs> You're drunk. I'm so drunk. Make me a perception drunk. check. Thanks for having my back, Dice. 16 plus one is 16. Uh, Avenir has dark lipstick all over his collar, his face, his neck, his ear, and, like, around his eye. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow. Well, that's some good face paint. Yeah, it was uh, uh, left over from the costume. I think the, uh, the mask ran. Right. Running masks. Wink. Valencia likes snorts. <laughs> let's get the thing signed. <laughs> All right, let's... I, I, Avenir, make me a walking with grace check. <laughs> <laughs> Please, no. <laughs> 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 I'm going to say dex save? Yeah. 15. You compose yourself and head upstairs. Hooray. Nailed, Nailed it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> <sighs> All right. Uh, after not too much trouble, you find Mr. Nishi. He's surrounded by a group of people. He looks really happy. He's laughing, and every and everybody around him is a great is having a great time. So I said to them, "Why not just you have you guys go on stage?" And you know what? It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Rapturous applause. Oh, hey! Speak of those guys themselves. How did you like working for the Rectos? <laughs> Well, I mean, it wasn't working, really. That We haven't signed a contract. You I didn't think the labor... Yeah, the, the I don't think you actually yeah. paid us or anything. Skills, authorization. What are the work days like? Like, the, the hours? No. Long. Arduous. But it takes a lot of skill to do this. You can't just go on stage and wing it. Otherwise, you end up like you. But you, you were surprisingly good. I think you could have a future with our guild if you ever give up this Azorius work. I was told that I would find success no matter what uh, career path I chose. 
Oh, I don't think that's true of everyone. But uh, anyhow, let's let's sign your agreement. A deal is a deal. And he takes out his pen. Mm -hmm. and he signs the agreement. Checks out here. Valencia like plops it down with a little bit of drool on it and goes, "Yeah, it's good on this side too." Uh, and he goes, "Well, fantastic! Oh, perfect!" And he holds up the agreement with a big thumbs up, and you see, a, and you feel a big flash hit you, mm. and you see Franca taking a picture for the paper. Ah. <laughs> Thanks. This will be a for great for my article. Is, are we supposed to be keeping this secret? Uh, well, it is a bit premature, but. And with that, we call our session to a close. <laughs> Closer to death than uh, the the gruel, <laughs> the gruel clan that, fight. That, that was harrowing. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so oh. much for joining us this week on Dice Friends. We'll be back same bat time, same bat channel next week. <laughs>